Hi, Terry Shanefeld for UAB School of Medicine. Sir Bradford Hill was an epidemiologist who developed criteria to determine if an association seen in a study was truly causative or not. In this video, I'll discuss each of Bradford Hill's criteria and how you can apply them to the findings of a study. As you read a study and are trying to figure out if the finding that is seen is causative, the drug causes the outcome, if some exposure causes the outcome, you really want to assess it against Bradford Hill's causality criteria. We'll go through each of them individually. First is strength of association. The higher the odds ratio of the relative risk, the stronger the association is. So we believe that an odds ratio or relative risk of say five is much more associated with causation than an odds ratio or relative risk of 1.1. Temporality, cause must precede effect. That makes sense. This is pretty easy to figure out in a cohort study because we start out with exposure in people without disease and we follow them for disease. Much harder to figure out though in a case control study. Three, consistency. If we have multiple studies in different populations, maybe even using different designs showing the same finding, that increases the credibility of this finding. So for example, in the uh, Nurses Health study, which is a cohort study, they saw an association between postmenopausal hormone use and protection from cardiovascular disease. Well, there was also a case control study that showed a similar finding. So that makes you feel a little bit more um, sure that this could be a, a potential causative protective effect of hormone replacement therapy because we see two, two different study designs in two different populations showing the same thing. Biological plausibility. There must be some rationale or theoretical basis for our finding. Now, sometimes the authors will present this in the discussion section of their paper. Sometimes you might have to go um, look in other resources to try to see is there an underlying biological reason for the association that's seen. Dose-response relationship. We'd like to see that the greater the dose of exposure or the longer duration of that exposure, the greater is the risk of the outcome. So what you want to look for is increasing relative risks or odds ratios with increasing dose. Uh, or the longer somebody is exposed to that exposure, you should see greater relative risk or odds ratios than shorter exposures. Finally, experimental evidence. So if we have a, a true study or an experiment that shows this, um, this causal um, event, then you're going to be more likely to believe it than from observational studies. Now, for a lot of things, we can't do experiments um, because it's unethical, for example, to give somebody that something we know to be harmful. So this one is sometimes harder to satisfy. And then finally, there are three less important criteria. One is coherence, that the cause-effect relationship does not conflict with what is known or, and there are no other competing hypotheses. Specificity, the effect only has one cause. You can see that this really doesn't fit a lot of things. There are lots of different causes of diseases in medicine, so this one's tougher to satisfy. And finally, analogy, is that if you see some phenomenon in another area of medicine that can be applied to a different area, then you feel a little bit uh, more sure that it's causative. So finally, we need to remember what uh, Sir Bradford Hill said himself that none of these nine viewpoint, viewpoints can bring indisputable evidence for or against the cause and effect hypothesis. What they can do, though, with greater or lesser strength is to help answer the fundamental question. Is there any other way of explaining the set of facts before us? Is there any other answer equally or more likely than in a cause and effect relationship? I hope this video has helped you understand how to look at the results of its study and determine if the association is truly causative or not. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.